things are going really well. It's about 4.10. My feet hit the floor at about 4.01. Threw on socks. My new Skechers walking shoes that are actually more comfortable than Nike Air Max. Drink 12 ounces of water. Plug the coffee pot in. There you can see my shadow. Got my flashlight. In the mornings like this, I wear a hat that has reflective strips on it and I wear a kind of a mesh reflective vest as well. This neighborhood gets really dark at times. Sometimes the lights are out. And I bring a flashlight to be seen. Oh, there, see one of the lights just went out. And I bring a flashlight in order to not twist an ankle. And the reflective vest to be seen if a car is coming, which, which is very rare. And I'm the only one up in the neighborhood. I mean, all the houses are dark. Every now and then you can tell who the shift people are. Sometimes a house is fully lit up. There I am, under the street light. <laughs> Good morning. This is a two mile walk. The loop in the neighborhood is literally 1.31 miles. And then there's two streets that go out to a main road. And at two different points during the walk, I walk out to a main road. That right there is why I bring a flashlight. Don't want to twist an ankle. And when I take those two little roads out to the main road and just do a U-turn and then return to the loop, when I get back home, it comes out to about two miles. So what is the magic of two miles? Well, you remember my first job out of graduate school. I worked for a psychiatric nurse. She was the head of a clinic, 56 years old. She was in good shape. And I asked her, what does she do to stay in good shape? She was consistently in great shape. And I was a young man at that time. She said she walks two miles a day. And that's what I do. Now it's time for the U-turn. There we go. So two miles a day is great. When I was living in King of Prussia for many years, I used to walk Valley Forge Park, which was, the loop there was 5.5 miles. And I would walk that or ride my bike. And I remember there was a part where I would sprint up these hills I would sprint up these hills, and at the time, you remember Sony Walkman? You'd put a cassette tape in, and you put on headphones, and these things didn't like really even go in your ear. They were like these little cheap things that would go on your ear, with little foam. Oh, see, I'm kind of huffing and puffing now. There's about four or five hills in this neighborhood where 
if I am talking, I end up breathing like this. Which, of course, is what you're supposed to do for cardio. At a minimum, walk at such a pace where it's harder to talk. Like <laughs> how I'm talking now. I remember having the Sony Walkman on and I would listen to old Aerosmith. ZZ Top and Bon Jovi. <laughs> and there were always, like during this, during this particular walk that I would do, I would run during three songs. And the, uh, the Aerosmith song was Jamie's Got a Gun. That'll probably tell you what year it was. Uh, the ZZ Top song was Legs, and they were dispersed throughout the tape in such a way where equally. And I made this tape based upon the hills on the five and a half mile loop. And the third song was Bon Jovi, Dead or Alive. I think that's the name of the song. What else was in that on that tape? I would, believe it or not, I would make my own running mixtape at the time. Isn't that crazy? You ever do that? What else was on that? Cypress Hill was on that. Um, this was a little bit later in my life, probably when I was late 20s, early 30s, I would imagine. What was the other song? Rage Against the Machine, Killing in the Name of, that was what, 1990, 92? And what else was on that mixtape? Who did that song, Boom, Sherlock, Lock, Boom? Remember that? Was that Cypress Hill? I forget. Anyways, hey, there's the shadow. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? The shadow knows. You know who's a walking guy? Dr. Ralph. Now I'm walking up the second hill and it's harder to breathe. Dr. Ralph Napolitano, up in the Bronx. Do you know him? Probably gonna have him on the show real soon. He walks a lot. He walks, he's a chiropractor and owns a family restaurant. He walks and he does intermittent fasting, stays trim, stays in shape. I'm, I think I'm older than him, I'm pretty sure, probably. But between walking daily, this two mile walk, and it is not a easy walk at all. Between the, the two mile walk every day, working out a couple times a week, according to PD Mangan, two full body workouts each exercise is reps to exhaustion and then quickly go to the next lift, the next exercise. Drinking a lot of water, being very high protein, mostly meat with fresh vegetables, eating nothing processed, no added sugar. And I do all this for longevity and health and aesthetics as well. What do you think of my walk? Two miles. It's about four good hills that get me huffing and puffing. I plugged the coffee pot in 
and I will be having a cup of coffee with Heavy Queen in just a few minutes after I finish this last little leg of the loop. I stay off of main roads. I try to stay on as flat of ground as I can. Uh, I mean, it's even. I should say even, not flat. Even. So I know where I'm placing my steps and not going to hurt myself. And I walk in the road and not the sidewalks because the sidewalks are so uneven that they are just an accident waiting to happen. And then I don't need a twisted ankle or a busted up knee. And then I end the last part. I just walk around this doctor's office. And I find that as I've gotten older, my knees have become bony. Like, I can just, I can see the knee joint through the skin. I don't know if it's because I have less fat on my body. Don't know. It's very strange. Let me show you my knee. It's the weirdest thing. See, my knees, they're bony. Like this bone right here. It's weird. That's my light. But man, if I fell on these knees and scraped them, I just never had like this, what is this, the tibia? It comes up and ends right before the knee. Never had that. So what do you get? What happens when you walk two miles a day? Have this kind of lifestyle. Now you gotta realize I wake up at four o'clock. And it's great because I get more work done than any human being I know. What happens when you walk two miles a day, eat the way that I do, work out the way that I do. You get a trim body, you get trim, lean, muscular legs. You get a stomach that is flatter, even though I'm coming back from what I call the puffy COVID stomach, because I wasn't in the gym. And as you get older, men kind of get thicker around the waist. I ended up putting on weight because I wasn't going to the gym. And for me, that was about 10 pounds. That 10 pounds is off. So I am just about back to where I should be. You don't get challenged by lifting things, by moving things. And I'm talking about like unloading your car, practical stuff, gardening moving furniture up or, up or down stairs. I've opted for a, a lean look, not interested in big muscles anymore. And the body responds appropriately. And I'm, I'm working. This is, you know, there's effort that goes into my workouts. The walk takes determination. You get out and walk, rain or shine, whether you feel like it or not, regardless of what time you go to bed. The other night when I did the live stream on YouTube that I really enjoyed, where I was learning how to use StreamYard. Now I go to bed at eight o'clock. I was on that live stream to what, 10 or 10.30? I got to bed, according to my sleep tracker, at 11.10. What time did I get up the next morning? 4.10. <laughs> so I slept in for 10 minutes. So I've opted for a lean look, a, kind of a thinner trim look, not a, ooh, you've been working out, haven't you, look. I'm not interested in that. Spent my life completely connected to people's comments and reaction to muscles. Ooh, looks like you're working out. Ooh, you look like you're in shape. Oh, what's your workout? That kind of thing. And it's 
it's a nice little affirmation, but the reality is you're so connected to it. Now, people say to me, you look really trim, or they say nothing. People who knew me as a bigger, more muscular person. And you gotta realize I started out as a bulky football player-ish kind of physique, muscular, a thick layer of fat, strong, but felt sluggish and it wasn't good and had some wake up calls. Well, I am home now. You're gonna join me for a cup of coffee in a couple minutes and I'll see you inside. Well, thanks for joining me with my walk today. Getting ready to have my first sip of coffee. Just hanging out with one of my buddies here, right? You like hanging out with daddy in the morning because you're a good boy. I'm gonna do some reading today. Knock out one of the I forget. I'm, I think I'm reading five or six books. Is it five or is it six? Knocking out one of those books this weekend. And I'm committing to finishing all the others before adding another one. Going to answer some emails after that once it gets a little bit lighter. And then probably, I'm probably going to have a salad for breakfast. Sounds weird, right? A salad. But I made lamb last night. Well, it'll be more of a brunch. It'll be a little bit later. I'm the kind of guy that eats when I'm hungry. I don't eat because it's breakfast time. I do not eat because it's dinner time. I eat because I'm hungry. And when you eat according to your body's hunger and drink according to thirst, all right, see you later. <laughs> what happens is you, you never feel full, ever. You just... You're hungry, you're thirsty, you eat, you drink, period. And that's really it. And that's how I operate, and I love it. Answer some emails. Send out some encouraging words to some people. I'm a mentor to a lot of people. If I told you the names of the people who I communicate with, you would know them. People that are well-known in the media. And I'm not talking about my coaching and mentoring. I'm talking about encouraging words and dialogue that I have with people. People who are in sports. People who are in the news. People who are authors that you would know if I said their names. But the deal is that it's not a formal deal. It's just a private relationship with people who have found me and have written me and they enjoy the privacy and it's um, it's a nice it's a nice way to relate to people when you draw people and you are pre-selected as a trusted friend and mentor you know it's a mad mad world isn't it there's never been a more appropriate time for sanity, clarity, and reason. It makes sense now, doesn't it? It does. A lot of playing going on here. <laughs> These are rescues that I have. I have rescued and fostered so many. Of everything. Raccoons, possums, foxes, deer. The animals, dogs, cats, 
the animals that are, I would say, uh, the domestic animals that everyone has, and then the animals that are indigenous to the region. And it just brings me joy, a lot of joy, a lot of peace as well. It's quiet. The mornings are quiet. I think about my goals. I think about how can I best serve people? How can I be most efficient in helping assist lives? I think about my speaking engagements, my podcasts. I think about who I want on the show. Did you ever notice that my conversations are not interviews? Some people do, like, quote-unquote, interviews. I'm not interested in interviews. Interview reminds me of, like, interrogation. I don't know why. When I have someone else on the channel, this is what I tell them. I want them to feel like... I, I tell the person, I want my audience to feel like they're eavesdropping on a conversation between two friends or even two people that just met. And I like that. I like that style. It's comfortable. You learn something. It, you know, I used to say this. So here it is. on It's Sunday morning. And nobody remembers anything from church, sermon-wise. And I used to say, if there was a a toll gate at the parking lot. Like, you couldn't get out of the church parking lot unless you gave three things that you learned from the sermon that day. Nobody would, would be able to leave church. Think about it. So my goal, and, that's, and, that, and I'm a pretty motivated learner when it comes to classrooms, seminars, workshops, going to worship, listening to a sermon, listening to a teaching. I'm pretty avid when it comes to learning. And I got to the point where I was... I just know people don't remember what you teach them. I know that. And if you can teach people one thing, one thing, the takeaway, I call that the takeaway, if they can have one thing that they take away from the Daybreak Show. One thing that they take away from my morning vlog. Then I'm happy. If you learn one thing and leverage that one little thing and it changes your life, I'm happy. But I am outcome independent in the sense that I don't need to really know. I don't need the feedback. I know my words are like very are seeds that are falling on fertile soil. Some of the seeds fall on hard ground. Some of the seeds might sprout and then die off. But for those seeds of knowledge that fall on fertile soil, your life changes. And that's why I say, you can be unrecognizable by this time next year. Your body can be different. Your mind can be different. You can feel healthy, talk healthy, think healthy, have a healthy opinion of people, of the opposite sex, of learning about life. You can be less cynical, have a closer relationship with the Lord. What a great place to be. And not have any needs at all in your life. Nothing pressing. Nothing. Nothing. What a beautiful place to be in life. You know? So what did you get from this vlog? Put it down below. What is the one thing that you got from this morning's vlog? Other than just entertainment value or taking up your time. Is there an overall theme that you got? How did my life... I shared a bit of my life. There was no... Uh, what I call chalkboard theory in this morning's vlog. You were with me. You literally were with me as I started my day. What did you get either from my lifestyle or from what I have taught? Put it down below. I'd like to hear that. And this is the kind of stuff we'll be doing at the Daybreak Ranch and the Daybreak Studio. 
A couple weeks ago, you heard me talk about the Daybreak Ranch for contemplation and creation. Lives will be changed. You will be different by this time next year. Finish your coffee, and I'll see you on the next vlog. I don't know when it will be. But my vlogs are fairly spontaneous. And thanks for coming to my channel, which is the home of sanity, clarity, and reason in a mad, mad world.